Welcome back, Success Evolutionaries. It's your one and only favorite guide through the jungle of life here, Dr. Josh. Today, we're going to dive into tackling something we've all tried to avoid at one point or another, having difficult conversations. That's right. You know, those chats that make you wish you were a meme artist for a day. Now, let's start by understanding what makes a conversation difficult. Is it because we're talking about rocket science or physics or chemistry? Not quite, though that would certainly make for an interesting chat, but it's because we are involved in topics that may be sensitive, that may trigger negative emotions or have high stakes. It's like playing a game of chess, just with your emotions. Difficult conversations are the emotional equivalent of trying to thread a needle during an earthquake. They're tough because they challenge us emotionally and intellectually, right? They involve topics that are sensitive, that are emotional, and that have high stakes and outcomes that can potentially change relationships. Difficult conversations are a bit like a visit to the dentist. No one looks forward to them, but they're necessary. The x-ray here isn't just of your teeth, but of the entire relationship dynamic involved. They are tough because they force us to confront our emotions and the emotions of others as well, right? And so we need to tread carefully on topics that are sensitive. Now imagine a conversation as an emotional dance, the tango, if you will. It's passionate, it's intense, and if you don't know the steps, you're likely to step on someone's toes. Now what counts as a difficult conversation may differ from person to person. For some, it is as simple as discussing a performance issue while for others, it's talking about financial issues or confronting a friend about a concern, or it could be a relationship issue between married people or partners. Imagine you are in a boxing ring, but instead of gloves, you have words. Now don't start throwing haymakers. That's not how we're playing here. It's about dancing with your partner, not knocking them out. These conversations can be as diverse as discussing job performances with an employee at work, breaking up with a partner, hopefully not, but it happens, or even talking about end of life decisions with a loved one. And hey, if you've ever had a tough conversation that felt more like a chaotic tango than a harmonious dance, go ahead and hit that button. Hit that like button. We've all been there. Now, how do we prepare for these times? of conversations. In the wise words of someone very close to me, myself, preparation is key, especially when it comes to difficult conversations. You got to be ready to have them. You can't just walk in there and wing it as if you're doing a high school improv show. That's not going to work. Picture this. You're about to give a speech to an audience of thousands of people. Would you just stroll in there on stage without any preparation? Unless you're a seasoned improv artist, probably not. The same goes for difficult conversations. They need preparation. Think about the key points you want to address. Anticipate reactions and prepare for responses. And remember to keep your goal in mind. It's not just about winning here. It's about reaching a resolution. Preparing for a difficult conversation is like training for a marathon, right? It requires mental fortitude and having a clear plan. And wouldn't hurt to have some serious hydration so your throat don't get dry while you're talking. You don't want to be all in the zone having an important conversation and start <clears throat> clearing your throat. I'm just kidding. All right, well, let's keep going. But jokes aside, you want to step into the conversation fully prepared. This means identifying your goal for the conversation, understanding the other person's perspective, and preparing to handle emotional reactions. Remember, you're not going in there to win. You are aiming for an understanding. You're aiming to reach a resolution. You're trying to maintain the relationship. Now, if you agree that preparation is key, let me see some affirmation in the comments below and feel free to share any preparation strategies that have worked for you. Now, let's talk about navigating through these types of conversations. All right, so you prepared for the conversation, right? And now it's game time. You step into the arena, arena, armed with your emotional intelligence and a truckload of empathy. Let's talk about strategies to help you navigate these tricky waters. Now, entering the conversation is like stepping into a river. It's fluid, it's changing, there might be some unexpected rapids, it's flowing. Now, if you're finding these tips helpful, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We're always navigating tough waters together on this channel, so come join our community of success evolutionaries. Now, actually, navigating through these types of conversations is where the rubber meets the road, or should I say, where the word meets the ear. Now, you prepared, you've rehearsed, and now it's time to, to, to show what you got. Your goal is to get your message across clearly while also understanding the other person's point of view. Now in this dance of dialogue, we need to lead with empathy. Lead with empathy, follow with understanding, and be direct but not blunt. Remember, you're having a conversation, not swinging a sledgehammer. So be open to feedback. 
and don't be afraid to adjust your viewpoint if the other person is presenting a valid point to you. Just remember, it's okay to pause. Silence can be golden, even if it feels a bit awkward. Just don't panic, stay focused, listen actively, and be patient. It's all about navigating through with respect and empathy. Keep the conversation focused, avoid personal attacks, and remember, this is a dialogue, not a monologue. That means listening, not just waiting for your turn to speak. Now, after the conversation is over, it's not just a mic drop moment where you exit the stage. No, my friends, there's a bit more to it. So let's explore the steps you need to take after the conversation is done to ensure that you have a positive outcome. All right, so the conversation is over. You've done it, be proud. You did it, you made it through, but hold on. to run off the stage just yet. After the conversation is over, it is time to reflect and to understand what just happened and what comes next. It's about making sure the conversation leads to positive change, not just more of the same. But once the conversation is over, don't just say forget it. Don't just leave and just hope for the best. This is not a Hollywood movie, right? It's time to reflect. We must reflect, we must understand, and we must take action. Now ask yourself, how did the conversation go? Did you achieve your goal? How was your delivery? And most importantly, what are the next steps? The post-conversation phase is your opportunity to cons consolidate and make sure that you get the outcome that leads to positive change. Now, difficult conversations may seem like a roller coaster ride. I don't like roller coasters. You know, they might seem like crazy roller like tornado rides, but they're a part of life. So buckle up, embrace the challenge, and remember, you've got this. We've all been there, the pulse quickening, the stomach churning, sudden urge to become a hermit, but difficult conversations don't have to be something we dread. They are an opportunity to grow, a chance to improve relationships, and to clear the air. So the next time you face one, step right into it with confidence, knowing that you are armed with the tools to handle it with grace. So while difficult conversations are difficult, they're a crucial part of life, both personal and professional lives. So remember success evolutionaries, we're on this journey together, so do leave a comment below about your experience with difficult conversations and don't forget to subscribe and stay connected. Now speaking of personal development and our journey to become the best communicators we can be, our next stop will be understanding and leveraging your communication style. Are you a director, an initiator, a thinker, or a supporter? And if you're curious to find out and to learn how you can flex your style to interact more effectively with others, make sure to tune into our next episode. And if that's a journey you want to embark on, don't forget to hit subscribe button and join our community of success evolutionaries. Together, we will conquer the world one conversation at a time. Until next time, folks, this is Dr. Josh signing off. Peace out.